forget the past. You especially forget what that government did, what the Communist Party did for the people. Another is uh, try to help people to remember, remember the history, learn the lesson from the history. So that's very important to focus about the fighting for democracy and for our dictator. So my job, I think, is uh, on one part, it's a uh, uh, professional because uh, our laboratory, the principle, five principles. One of the main principle is uh, the information free floating. So you help people to get uh, the picture of uh, the, who, the true history. So see what I do, the build a uh, database online database, CD-long database, and the publish bibliography, dictionary, uh, the encyclopedia we're working for. So all those just try to, you know, uh, tell people the truth, to collect the historical memory. But just because of that, those government, they are happy about me. Five years ago, when I returned to my homeland, China, just to collect some materials, then they say those material is a state secret. So they detain me for half a year. Of course, uh, I'm the lucky, uh, lucky boy, so I was finally released without any charge. Of course, international media, you know, U.S. Congress, and the China scholars, they put a lot of effort to, to rescue me. I think they recognize not rescue a uh, common library. It's a defense of uh, principle. It's a rescue of historical memory. That's what we we working for. So today, you can see that you were uh, have chance to see part of the movie. I uh, actually I serve as a consultant made by German national uh, TV. It's talking about uh, the cultural revolution. It's very interesting when I come to here. It's a uh, 1989, after Tiananmen Square Students' Movement. I was not very active because I was a professor at that time, but a lot of my students, I encouraged my students to attend. So after the Tiananmen Square, I think China just go to another dark period, especially politically and culturally. So I choose, I go to Western to get my graduate degree. So you could compare with the movie you will see at Tiananmen Square during 1966 to 1976. Majorly, the students like my age, they used to be mouth support. So I always say uh, my generation, the road that we pass is very painful, but we should say it's from mouth support to mouth enemy. So that's why they put me in jail in uh, five and a half years during the 10-year revolution. It's not only me, thousands and thousands of uh, young students like me share the same painful experience. Because we finally realized that communism, communism is not working, Maoism especially not working for China. We try to push China on the right track. Of course, China is still on the wrong track. But what I see today, the Hungarian freedom fighters, the Hungarian revolution is uh, happened in 1956. Then after 35 years, they finally got freedom. 1989 students movement is uh, about uh, 17 years ago. So we could see, I'm always optimistic. When 2000, they finally released me, they tried to pursue me, say, when you go back to the United States, don't study cultural revolution again, then we will give you freedom, go back to China. So my answer is, I will have freedom one day, Peking University and Tsinghua University, that's the two top universities, invite me to give lecture in China, in that two top university, to teach cultural revolution. It's my dream. I think the dream will become true if everyone try to keep the memory, try to preserve the true history. This is what we, as a common people, at least we could do.
I think I, I did my part. I will try to do my part uh, better and better. Thank you very much for uh, giving me this uh, award. I think this is in college, really. Thank you. Give us a hand. Thank you, Mr. Adam. It's now um, celebrating friends. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank for the uh, fantastic dinner. Uh, so, uh, my second thing that I would like to do, again thank Ms. Lowe uh, that, uh, for, for the compliment that I'm too young. <laughs> uh, indeed, uh, um, 50 years ago, uh, there was a very important event. Uh, uh, in Hungary, uh, as we all know about it, the Hungarian Revolution. It started with uh, with uh, a few thousand students walking out uh, in solidarity with the uh, Polish uh, Polish uh, unrest, and uh, uh, within hours. Those thousands grew into tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands. So, as we heard a few minutes ago, it became something unbelievable and something that that uh, the dictatorship could not handle. It was impossible to handle. And uh, within hours, it was no longer uh, the Polish events. It was the demand of, of uh, the students and the workers who, by the hundreds of thousands, were demonstrating in uh, uh, Budapest streets. Well, <clears throat> the freedom lasted only 13 days. After 13 days, 200,000 people left Hungary. But uh, 20,000 died in the fight for, uh, for freedom and for democracy against, uh, against the dictatorship and against uh, the oppressive uh, Soviet troops, presence of Soviet troops. Well, uh, however, as 200,000 people left Hungary, uh, the fight for freedom continued on. Not in Hungary, but outside of Hungary. Of course, in Hungary, everything was impossible after November 4th, 1956. However, the 200,000 who left Hungary left saying that we will continue on and we will come back. Well, <clears throat> some people returned, of course, uh, to Hungary later on, but uh, many of the 200,000 uh, continued the fight in the West. In 1957, the Hungarian Freedom Fighters Federation was established. Uh, <clears throat> One of the founders is sitting right here, Mr. Dolinsky. <clears throat> and uh, let me tell you something. Perhaps uh, it could be, uh, uh, could be maybe a, a message to uh, Chinese friends also that what happened after 19 after uh, uh, the 200,000 people left Hungary uh, we established these organizations like the Hungarian Freedom Fighters and uh, and we protested here uh, in the West we uh, 
uh, made people remember what happened, because as, as you know, uh, especially here in America, people forget very quickly. But we were there, we, we uh, celebrated uh, every anniversary, we uh, protested every time um, somebody visited uh, the United States from the Eastern Bloc, Russia or Hungary. Um, we uh, continuously uh, applied pressure on, uh, on Western governments. By the way, the Hungarian Freedom Fighters Federation had chapters all over the world, in the Western world, since 1957. And in every, uh, in every country, uh, we tried to, to apply as much pressure as possible, demonstrations, tried to, uh, uh, to put uh, the Hungarian Revolution and, uh, and the idea of freedom front page of the newspapers and on television. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I believe that uh, uh, that this is something that that our Chinese friends uh, can and should do also to to make uh, make the, uh, the fall of uh, uh, the dictatorship faster to speed it up. And, uh, and I wish that, uh, that the Chinese people will become free as soon as possible. The Hungarian freedom fighters set the course for the beginning of the end of the Soviet communist system. For demonstrating the power of the human spirit, in the struggle for freedom, for their courage in standing up against totalitarianism despite tremendous sacrifice, for their lighting the way to freedom for the generations which were to follow. We award these freedom fighters the 2006 Spirit of Tiananmen Award. <coughs> Julius Bogar. Helen Ashford. John Dolinsky.